Hello everyone, I'm Michaela Kathleen and I am back with another tier ranking video. I did this last month with the Harry Potter series and all companion books. And I started with Harry Potter because for my tier ranking system I like to use the Owls grading system from the Harry Potter series. Although I did get it wrong last month. I thought for sure I knew it and so I didn't go check to make sure and I left off an entire tier. So the tiers are O for outstanding, E for exceeds expectations, A for acceptable, P for poor, D for dreadful, which is the tier that I left off the last time, and T for troll. So yeah, now this month I will be using the same ranking system to rank all of the fantasy books and series that I have read. So starting right off, I thought we would start with a pretty obvious one, and that is Harry Potter, which of course is outstanding. This is the series that really got me into reading. As a little kid, I didn't like reading very much. I liked to have my mom read to me, but I would never read anything on my own. And so Harry Potter was the first book that I really read on my own, and it has just been a mainstay of my entire life. Next, I have another old childhood favorite, and that is The Land of Elion series by Patrick Carmen. And this is another series just filled with a lot of magic and a lot of lovable talking animal side characters. And this was one where I really could connect with the main character as a kid. But the later books in the series did not hold up quite as much as the first book. And as I have grown older, I have grown a little bit apart from this series. I still love it and it's still an old classic, but it doesn't hold up quite the way that Harry Potter does for me. And so this one just lands in the acceptable category. Next, I have a much newer series, and this is actually a series that I haven't finished yet. I have only read the first one, and that is Three Dark Crowns. And I really loved the first book a lot. I read it last year, and I am super excited to continue with it. And I have high hopes that the series as a whole could land in Outstanding, but since I haven't finished the series yet, I'm just putting it in Exceeds Expectations. And this one is by Kendar Blake. Next, going back to an old classic. This is one of the oldest books on my shelves, and it is Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. This book for me just has like a very distinct feeling and mood to it. It's always felt really homey to me, and I've always just really loved this one. The main character is a really awesome layered main character with a lot of personality. And this one definitely holds up and stands the test of time and therefore is outstanding for me. Next, I have The Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Eves. And I actually don't own this one anymore. I got this one as a free advanced reader's copy. I had won this like contest at Barnes & Noble a few years ago and I got like a year subscription to First in Line which sent an advanced copy of a book every month for a year. It was super awesome. <laughs> but this one was a big miss for me and I did not keep it. And so this one landed in Troll for me. Next I have yet another old classic. A lot of my fantasy books are my oldest books because that was the first genre that I really loved as a kid. And this one is The Prophecy of the Stones by Flavia Bujor. I always liked that this one was by a French author and she wrote it when she was 15 and that was inspiring because I wanted to be a writer as a kid. And I felt like it was a really excellent fantasy book as a kid. And I definitely hold a more special place in my heart for it than I do for the Land of Elion series. But now that I'm older, I do recognize the flaws in it. And there are definitely places where you can tell it was written by a younger author. So even though I still really enjoy it, I decided to put it in the acceptable category. Next, I have the Peter and the Starcatchers series. I have always loved Peter Pan and 
all of the multiple retellings of Peter Pan. And this was one of the first retellings that I ever found. It might be the first retelling that I ever read. And I really loved the background that it gave, explaining how everyone ended up where they're at and came to be the people that we know. But again, this one suffers a bit from series lag. I really liked the first one, but then the rest of the series was kind of meh. And therefore, I decided to put it in acceptable. Next, I have perhaps the most recent fantasy, new fantasy series that I have read, and that is Six of Crows, which I read just a few months ago and really enjoyed. This is a duology by Lee Bardugo. I have not read the Shadow and Bones series. I skipped straight to Six of Crows based on a recommendation, and it seemed to be a fine choice. I understood everything that was going on, and I don't feel like I got too bad of spoilers for if I ever go back for Shadow and Bone. But yeah, this is just such a well put together duology. Like as I was reading it, it just felt like oh, this is such a well put together story. So that's really enjoyable. And so this landed for me in Exceeds Expectations. Perhaps if it were an older book that I had had time to build up a loyalty to, maybe it would be an outstanding. I don't know, but I've only known the book, the series for a few months, and so I haven't built up that loyalty to it yet, I guess. Next, I have yet another old classic for me, and that is Inkheart by Cornelia Funk. I really loved the concept of this one as a kid, as a big reader, the idea of being able to read aloud and draw the characters out of the book was just fascinating for me. But once again, I really love the first book, and the second and the third are just alright. And so again, that pushed it down to acceptable for me. Next, I have another book that I no longer own, and is also another book that I got from that First in Line Advanced Readers Copy Club thing that I was a part of, and that is A Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier. And this one was again just a big miss for me, I didn't keep the book. It sort of felt cheesy to me for some reason, I'm not sure why. There were a couple of these first in line books that felt that way to me. This one felt the least that way, like the Blood Rose Rebellion definitely felt even more cheesy, but yeah, it just wasn't enjoyable for me. So this one is Troll. Next I have the Charlie Bone series by Ginny Nimmo, and this series is kind of similar to Harry Potter. It's a magical boarding school. Our main character is a 12-ish year old boy going to the this magical school for the first time. And so this was kind of just like a lesser Harry Potter for me as a kid, and so it was really enjoyable to have this other series to read whenever I was waiting for a Harry Potter book. But definitely has never been like on the Harry Potter level for me. And so this one was just something that was acceptable to read in the in-between time. Next I have Tiger Lily by Jody Lynn Anderson, and this is another Peter Pan retelling. And this one I discovered much later, although now years ago, but later than any of the other Peter Pan retellings. And this is one that I just really fell in love with. Tiger Lily is such an engaging character to read about, and this really has a different tone than a lot of the other Peter Pan retellings. It's a little bit darker, and it's another book that's just got its own mood to it that is just really engaging. And so this one for me is definitely outstanding. Next, I have the Game of Thrones series by George R. R. Martin. And this series I honestly mostly read because I wanted to see the differences between the TV show. I watched the TV show ahead of reading the books, but these books are so long and so dense that they're really a slog to get through. But I did manage to get through all of them, and so these for me were really just acceptable. They were something I kind of had to work through. Next, I have the book itself, Peter Pan, not a retelling, the original story. And the original story I actually really enjoy, which is kind of surprising because I'm not often into older books like that, old classics, but this one really does just have a magical feeling to it. 
and is really just an enjoyable read. It's pretty short and so it's a nice fun one to just get through quickly whenever you're in the mood. But that being said, I do actually tend to enjoy the retellings more than the original story itself. But since this is where it all started, this one for me lands in Exceeds Expectations. Next I have The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. And this one I read years after Princess Academy. I hadn't read any other Shannon Hale books, even though I knew she had plenty of other books and I loved Princess Academy, and so I was always interested in reading her books, but it just took me like a decade to get around to. <laughs> and so I finally got around to reading more of them. I read the sequel in the Princess Academy series. There are three of those, but the second and the third came out like way later than the first one and I just pretend that those don't exist. But then The Goose Girl I was excited for. It was the first in a series and the series came out fairly close together so it didn't... I think The Princess Academy kind of felt like a tack on and I figured that these wouldn't have that feeling. Although I still have only read the first one. I haven't read any of the other books of Bayern. That's what the series as a whole is called. So all that being said, I went into The Goose Girl with quite a bit of excitement and then it was a bit of a letdown because it definitely didn't have the feeling of Princess Academy, which is what I was looking for. But that being said, I did enjoy the book. And so this one for me is acceptable. Next, I have The Lord of the Rings, which it's a little bit debatable whether or not I should even include this one because I have never actually managed to finish these. I have tried multiple times. I've made it a fair way through The Hobbit, either half or three quarters of the way. I made it until the cave scene with Gollum. I really wanted to get to the cave scene with Gollum because that is such an iconic and good scene. I wanted to read it. So I got to the cave scene, which was a bit of a struggle, but then the cave scene was really good. I really enjoyed that chapter and I thought maybe the rest of the book will be more like this, enjoyable to read, unlike the first half of the book. But then they went back into the forest and describing every leaf on every branch, and I could not continue. The Lord of the Rings series I have made even less progress on. I don't know the furthest I've ever made it into the Fellowship, but I know it's not very far. So I went ahead and included these, knowing that it would be quite the controversial opinion, but these books are just so boring that I cannot even get through them. But that being said, I do love the story itself, the, the plot, I suppose. I love the movies. The writing is just so overly descriptive and they are such a slog that I can't actually read the books. <laughs> and so for that reason, I decided to put Lord of the Rings in the poor category. They're not dreadful or troll because I do enjoy the story itself, but considering I can't even make it through the books, I couldn't very well put them in the acceptable category either. So controversial as it may be, Lord of the Rings is poor for me. Next I have The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel series by Michael Scott. I read these, I feel like on the cusp of being too old for them. I did make it through the whole series, so at the time I found it acceptable, but I have since tried to reread them and I'm definitely too old for them now, and I'm not quite sure how I made it through the whole series. They are definitely not books that I enjoy anymore at all and I hold no sentimental value for them. And so for that reason I'm putting them in the dreadful category. Next I have the Reawakened series by Colleen Hook. This is another one that I got from that First in Line Club, and this was another one that felt very, very cheesy to me. I did not enjoy it at all. I did not keep the book. Unfortunately, they sent me the third one in the series, so I actually went out and bought the first one and then just barely made it all the way through. It was a fairly short book, so I did make it through but then I was definitely not willing to purchase the second one in order to read the one that I had received, the third one. So needless to say, this one was also troll for me. On to the final series, and I did want to end on a high note, so we have 
The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. I'm actually currently rereading these because there is a new short story collection out that takes place in this world that came out like last year. It just took me forever to get around to actually doing a reread because these books are long. <laughs> But I wanted to reread them before reading that short story series to refresh my memory. And I am so enjoying my reread. I still love this series so much. The series is definitely outstanding for me. I would say in my life, as far as fantasy series that have been like a pillar from the very beginning of my reading up to now, it would definitely be The Inheritance Cycle and Harry Potter. And yeah, that is all the fantasy books and series that I have read tier ranked into the Harry Potter Owls grading system. I hope you have enjoyed my tier ranking. Hopefully it hasn't been too controversial with the Lord of the Rings being down low and the inheritance being up high. I know that's also sometimes a controversial opinion. Let me know down below where you think I'm right and I'm wrong. And remember, words matter.